Hello, welcome to Good Questions, Good Answer. Today we have a very interesting question from our audience and something that we can help you to uh, solve your question. And as it is, Venerable Sander has joining us today as well to help solve this riddle that's come into our program. Venerable Sander, can you say hi to our audience? Hello everyone, thank you for having me on the program. Thank you very much for helping us again this time. Well, as you may see that many people, including me, myself and you, are facing the crisis of COVID by staying indoors shut. Since we had been locked down so many weeks now, it's also making change to the world drastically, especially the way we are living our life. So that's bring out the question to our topic today. What will our world look like after COVID-19? So when I was there, is there anything you would like to share your opinion on this question? Yes, so um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot that has been written about this topic. Mm -hmm. And I, I think um, we can look at it from basically two perspectives. We can look at how the world is going to look like according to the experts. Mm. And then we can ask ourselves the question how we could try to make the world look like following yes. the Buddhist ideals of improving society according to wisdom mm. and That's to um, yeah, good understanding. There is um, a lot that has been written about that as well. Let's start first with, uh, yeah, um, I have a, a number of things that I've noticed that has been written about when we talk about what will the world like look after COVID-19. Now, this is actually uh, for many people, this has been quite troubling news. Uh, some many economical experts say that there will be an economical crisis mm. after COVID-19 uh, has become less or has disappeared altogether. We will face a severe economical crisis. Economies will become more local, less international. Mm. Um, that, that is changing, so the international atmosphere that we have now in the, currently in the world will become less as we trust other countries less. This is all rather negative. There is mm. also things that are not particularly negative or perhaps they are or they are positive depending on, on yourself and how you look on it, how you look towards this. Well, um, Life will become more digital. That is one thing that has been uh, written about a lot by journalists. journalists. And uh, for example, restaurants will close more and more and more and more food will just be delivered at home instead. Mm, that's and because point. life will be more, become more digital, people are not going to live in the city so much anymore, especially in the suburbs. Mm. People will go and live in villages where they feel at home and they feel happy. So the city will become less important, which well, is kind of a big change. Yeah, you know, that's right. Well, and so you're yeah. saying that the people are more staying in home, and they're not going to work in the in the city anymore. So that's they start their right. own economics in their home living, right? Kind of like, uh, let's say, if I want to sell something, I have to make my own product be more uh, uh, attracting, so people buy from me rather than I go sell it in the supermarket or get them from the store, right? Right. But the, the bad news is that, there, of course, not everyone can ex access the Internet. Uh, There's still many millions of people in the world that cannot access the Internet, if not billions. I see. And so you get the, the division between rich and poor will become larger as a result. I see. So in this case, it's making quite difficult for those people who are having difficulty adjusting themselves with the situation. Right. So what is right. going to be like then for those who are unable to adapt? Yeah, so that will be more difference between poor. The poor will be poorer and the richer will be richer. Mm. That is what they predict, but uh, it all depends on us. So One I'm other thing, uh, a few things that have, that have been regarded as positive mm. are also mentioned a lot. Many uh, journalists are writing about that public service, public services like healthcare and childcare will become more available because of these uh, widespread illnesses. We tend to have to focus more on that. 
I so see. that that is a positive part and child care will become more important maybe it will even be seen as something that needs to be uh, that people who take care of their children need to be given an income mm. so that is quite challenging for this new world change however in buddhism when there's such thing like this happen is there any way how they apply how do people in that time apply we can use this as a uh, case study you have any suggestion about this situation yeah so there is a word that i think is very buddhist to to use mm. um, and that is I, f i found that in um, in an article from a singaporean uh, a, a, a writer i think he's a european uh, professor mm -hmm. And he's writing that the, the new thing that will be more and more important is eco sparity. In other words, ecological prosperity. So prosperity is okay for any country, mm -hmm. but we need to do it in ecological fashion. We need to take care of the environment. We need to make sure that we grow in a conscious way. And I think this is very Buddhist mm. to look at it that way. Okay. But maybe we can, like you mentioned, maybe it's important to look at how we could measure society's progress in general. Yeah. You okay. know, because a lot of about what we talk about when we talk about the future of uh, after COVID-19, we talk about how economy will become worse, how this and that people will become poorer. But how does Buddhism look at society's progress? Hmm. Because, for approach. example, some Buddhist countries like Bhutan mm. have become famous for the fact that they don't they don't use GDP, the gross domestic product, for their measurement of economical success, but they use gross national happiness, mm. or the instead of uh, interesting uh, another measurement. Okay. So the gross national happiness, which they use in uh, Bhutan, is measured by, for example. Uh, how people take care of their environment and how they have good social services, public services. So there's a whole entirely different way of measuring society based on what kind of things will make people happy mm. rather than just economical productivity. Mm. Okay, so um, when these Putin are using their mind, uh, like the happiness to be measurement of testing whether the people are living okay, So how do you propose this? How the world can adjust using in this kind of process to help the people measurement that using their mind or be happy in this situation? Yes, so, so when we think about uh, so, uh, progress, right, in mm -hmm. society and, and how a society should look like, that, that we have a history where those ideas are coming from. Mm. And these days, a lot of most people in the world will think in a very similar fashion. They want economical progress, they want scientific progress, technological, and maybe also solve social issues in the meantime. Exactly. Social problems. Yeah. These But for, 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 for they are Buddhism, worried about. perhaps for any religion for that matter, okay. the most important progress is that of the individual. And uh, that is very important. And uh, that is uh, like considered an uh, important measurement. So whenever you look at how society is improving, the first, first and most important growth is that of the human mind, or more specifically, right. the manner in which the people who live in any society have become wiser mm. or not. Yes, when the mind become more wiser, they tend to make things more productive and be happier too. These are the good approach. Right. And how do you propose this way for the people to make their mind be productive, just like economics and scientific and technological social to go together? Well, I, I think that many politicians would s simply respond by saying that is the domain of religion mm -hmm. and uh, perhaps some social services, but not the domain of politics. Mm. Politics needs to take care of economics and, and uh, other things, but not the individual The individual needs to determine himself or herself how you're going to be happy or how you're going to develop wisdom uh -huh. but maybe that's too easy maybe that's too easy maybe we shouldn't separate the two like that no we should you not know? it should go together yes 
Yes, for example, a lot of uh, things depend on leadership. In Buddhism, we say that a lot of growth can be accomplished by example. Okay. We talk about personal growth in terms of wisdom. Mm -hmm. And if you want to become wise, you need an example, you need to have a teacher. Uh -huh. And those, that is the basic way of how we look at uh, growth of wisdom in Buddhism and growth in general. So in, in Buddhism, we think it's very important to have good examples. So that's one thing. And the other thing is that wisdom is the key factor in growth in Buddhism. And uh, if we're going to look at how society will look like tomorrow, from Buddhist perspective, we have to ask ourselves, have be people become wiser? And wisdom, of course, also comes from the still mind, the meditative mind. Okay, by putting this aside, can you also uh, mention a little bit about the behavior change and the AI that's going to be taking the major role in the society after this change? How about we go to that approach? That used to be a very important part of predictions of the future, that many people were going to lose their jobs, especially in poor countries. Yes, I believe so, too, last year. Economies. But when COVID but strike... But right now, <laughs> maybe many things have changed because of these... Um, these illnesses and diseases and, mm. uh, and other problems that we're facing right now, also economical problems. But of course, the, in the future, you, at a certain point, artificial intelligence will become more and more important. What will remain is what we are uh, most creative in. You know, there's a lot of things, creativity and the power of the human mind cannot be replaced by robots cannot be a play, replaced by AI, artificial intelligence. So mm -hmm. what really makes us human, creativity and wisdom, that is still the most essential form of growth in society. Hmm. I have to agree on that because the mind is surpassed AI. The mind can be more creative and making more productive when it is something that is come from our uh, good wisdom that arise in ourselves right. when we are facing such crises. So in this case, can you give an example about um, how it would, would be like, for example, some such situa situation that come into your mind about this, the mind that can be surpassed the AI? So an AI might learn to do surgery instead of a surgeon. Ah. Okay. <clears throat> but an AI might not be able to make the right decisions mm. when a patient is confronted with a dilemma, with a problem, you know. Mm -hmm. For example, if a woman that is pregnant um, might die of the pregnancy, will the mother decide to live or will she choose to have the pregnancy and will the child live and not the mother, you know. These mm. choices are very difficult. It does. You right, normally common practice. The doctor will ask the mother, will tell her if you're going to have this baby, you're going to die. If you're not having this baby, you're going to live. Mm. And then, then the mother will choose. Yes. But what if an AI comes in? Maybe the AI will choose for the mother, and mm. will their decision be good? Maybe the AI will decide. Well, the child has more years to live, so I will choose the child. Hmm. But we are, have wisdom, we have understanding, maybe we will make different choices than an AI which only can make calculations. Hmm. So, so there is no empathy of... there, there is no wisdom, there is no real desire to free other living being, beings and hmm. oneself I from see. suffering. All right, that's a good answer. So the very definition of Buddhism is that we would like to attain to the end of suffering, to attain to true happiness for oneself and others. Hmm. And if, if, uh, if you are talking about artificial intelligence, they don't have that. Hmm. So that is their limit, I see. Well, um, that is the good answer with the AI. Uh, what about the people behavioral change from this point? So what do you think would going to affect? by this thing, since they normally travel, go to work another time, now they work at home. What is going to be their change? And what should they change? And how do they adjust? Yeah, that, that's a very good question. 
So when we are more at home, the, the thing that we need to be careful of is that we, we are going to be more at home, but it doesn't mean that we should be more afraid. It's important that we take good care of our mind. And right. now that we are at home more often, that we are not, because it could, it could arise. What could, what could happen is that we become more afraid of everything that's far from us. Hmm. Uh, if we you become our more future, afraid of foreigners, worry about that. Mm. Are more afraid of other people, of our neighbors, because we are always at home. So mm. that can lead to fear, and it can also lead to lack of understanding. Mm. So it's important that we continue to uh, to find new ways to build a good society. Now, the disadvantage of digital life, life in so social media as opposed to actually meeting in person is that we always meet only the people who we like. <laughs> we are in a, what they call a social bubble, the social media bubble. Yeah, we hardly Facebook meet new people, right? And all the other important high-tech companies or the big tech companies, mm. they provide these excellent bubbles in which you only meet the people who you like, who you agree with. Mm. But the very foundations of a good society is that we learn to listen to those who are different from us. Mm. So, so that way we can that adapt and change for the be better. Careful of. We have to I learn, see. we have to keep talking with people who are different from us. Well, since we have to live in the close society, we hardly see new people. So we are having diffi yeah. difficult time to adapt in uh, facing new people like this. So is there any Dharma in Buddhism or any suggestion how we approach on this change and adapt ourselves to live for the better life in the future. Yes, so I mention wisdom all the time. Wisdom is the essential quality in Buddhism, mm. but it also has its origins. In order to become a wiser person, first of all, we need moral discipline. Okay. Or what we call sila. Okay. So the moral discipline uh, for example, how do we deal with intoxicants like mm. alcohol? Okay. These are things that, that determine the quality of our mind and body. Mm. And if your mind, for example, if you are not having a healthy relationship with alcohol, mm. then you cannot possibly create, find wisdom in your life. It will always be very superficial. Yeah, that's true. So that's true yeah. because um, you see when people are living close together, especially in their home, in their family, if they don't have this moral, they could, you see, uh, lose control of themselves and hurt each other or violence leading up by her own husband when he loses right. control. This thing could happen. So this is a good point that uh, for people who are living in door church should be uh, try to maintain their self-discipline or the precept or sila that you mentioned. Another thing that's important is that that apart, in order to have wisdom in one life, in one's life, you need to sometimes restrict yourself by discipline, by moral discipline. Mm. But you also learn you need to learn to let go. You need both. They seem like opposites, mm. but they are, need to go together. So you also need, in other words, you also need with meditation. I see. Yes, to, to have wisdom, you need to have clarity of mind to be able to let things things sink in and to make the right judgment in matters yeah that's and that true. for that you need clarity of mind clarity of mind is needed to have a to clean up the lens through which we look at the world mm. and clarity of mind you can create the best way to create it is through meditation if you learn to to focus your mind on one single object in a soft and natural way that will have such an impact on our daily life mm. and the wisdom that we have. So okay. if we have moral discipline and meditation, then we can develop more and more wisdom in our lives. Mm. So these practices, I'm very happy to hear that some countries are now uh, using mindfulness practices in their uh, education, in some parts of their uh, public education system. But this mm. shows that we do not need to label these practices as religious. We simply consider that they're very useful to practice and to make our mind clear mm -hmm. and 
that in this way we can improve wisdom and therefore its society. Mm. That's a good point. And now to end with our question today. You see, now when we are worried about what it's going to be like after COVID-19, can you tell us the ideal when it's everyone is settled down and everyone happy? What would be the ideal world for the COVID-19 after this change? Yeah, so there is actually a teaching and it's, it's, it's quite extensive uh, teaching. So I will just go through it briefly. Okay. Uh, in the Buddha, which he very interestingly taught just before he passed away ah. into Nirvana. And this teaching is called the um, uh, Dhamma. Oh, is there any simple is, English name? Seems, <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. This is kind of difficult to translate, but it, basically it comes down to things that are conducive to growth. So mm. if you talk about the growth, in other words, progress, which we call progress these days. Okay. The progress of society, what does it depend on? Mm. And then the Buddha, he mentions uh, several items, in total seven items oh, okay. that Buddha are the, what he considers the ideal society in Buddhism. So we start with uh, uh, the discipline part. Okay. You, you need, if you have, if you are in any community or society in, in large, at mm -hmm. large, you need to have regular meetings. So okay. what I was just mentioning, that we sometimes talk with people who are other than ourselves, who think in other ways. We meet together regularly. There is unity in society. Some mm. countries these days are facing many difficulties, not because they are not good people, but because the people are so different that the country has become polarized. So because of polarization, people are becoming very different in their opinions. They are isolated socially. They don't talk, they don't meet together, and therefore society cannot develop. So it is because and of the, the other culture? Thing, yes, please. Is it because of the culture, the difference, that's why they are so having dif in di different... Political. I see. It, it's also cultural bit, but mostly political. Everything is just divided between progressive and progressive and conservative or left wing and right wing politics. You need to have something, some common grounds see. to meet together and talk. And this is not just politics. This is happening at the grassroots level. People are just not talking with each other because one person is a, a left wing guy, another person is a right wing guy. So people are dividing the world into all sorts of uh, different uh, types. I see. And uh, this, is, this is promoted by social media, so that we only talk with the, the same type of person as ourselves. You have to meet regularly, we have to meet with people, even those who are different. Mm. And then we meet and work peacefully and in unison. Mm. This is the second part. So we don't not only meet, but we also work together. So right now, this is a good example. Um, in, in Holland, for example, though there are political differences, some of those differences are now put aside to work together to overcome the illness, to overcome COVID-19. Because we cannot just can think of politics only. We need to look that we all want to live. We all love life. Nobody wants to die, whether you are left or right wing politician. Mm -hmm. So everyone wants to work for that. So everyone works together. So this is a good example, but I think my society, my, my country is not ideal, but this part is good. Okay. Well, um, so that's uh, in order to make it make more peaceful and happy in the future, rather than just separate in ourselves from each other, rather we should meet in each other. So right now we have technology advances that allow us to meet more often especially like me I'm in you meeting now, even though we're living far together apart, we still are connected to each other. So that is one way to meet, hold a meeting regularly. What about the other six? Yeah, so the second two items are also kind of like a pair. Yeah, I, so as I mentioned, so there's two aspects here, mm -hmm. not to reinvent the wheel, the old principles and, and, and aspects of society that we should continue like in Thai, language, in Thai culture to respect your elders is very important. Uh, there's also uh, the like uh, in my own culture to to brotherhood and 
take good care of each other, solidarity is very important. Okay. So these qualities we should keep in mind. At the same time, we should also not just look at um, uh, what has always been the case, what is always what are the principles, the ancient principles of our society, but we should also look at how we can take good care of the elders and if there's anything new that we can learn from them and uh, that we should uh, practice. There's always possibility to have change, but it should come from people who have a spiritual uh, experience and wisdom. Mm. What about next one? Yes, the last items um, oh, the, the number five is a bit strange yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> for thinking the modern too. times yeah. to refrain from abducting and detaining women to marry. But this is actually important because in, in ancient times this was pretty common. Mm. And the Buddha, of course, he did want to protect women. And he also wanted to make sure that we did not uh, use politics or use uh, our desires and, 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 and search for profit and, and prosperity and then make people suffer because of that. He didn't okay. want that. So okay. that is what is meant here. What about after that? Yes, and the last two are basically respecting mm -hmm. and honoring our religion. Mm -hmm. So that is not only Buddhism. The Buddha doesn't specifically mean Buddhism. But if we live in a society where there is no Buddhism or very little Buddhism, okay, we can say also in general, it's important to take good care of your holy places that make people wiser mm. and take good care of your teachers that make people wiser. I so see. Um, in, in Buddhist country, this will of course mean Buddhism, but in countries where there is no Buddhism, it could mean in generally wise people. Uh, mm or people that lead to places that lead us to wisdom and mm. uh, therefore in the modern times it's important that we take good care of our oh, temple okay. meditation centers and also take good care of the teachers who teach in those centers i see so these are the important person who are going to live your both spiritual and your quality of living life in the good and correct path so well these right. are the suggestion that you're given that allow us to see the modern idea, how the people can live at this time of uh, after COVID-19. Also in conclusion, everyone, now, after living our life in this lockdown for many few weeks, we begin to see the surface and a glimpse of how our life will be uh, changing in this approach. In order to make ourselves living in peaceful and harmony, don't forget to improve the quality of your mind by practice of the precept or self-discipline to maintain the good mind quality and that's allow you to meditate better and when you meditate better your mind become clear and clarified and that's when you are making yourself progress to make a living in the society don't forget to associate yourself or meeting with the people around you and those who are uh, out of touch for example that been friend for a long time try to get connect with them more often so that way we can see what's going on around us and we can make adapt ourselves adapt to the new change in the society and the new life we are living in. So these are the ideal and how we can practice and make ourselves maintain happiness in living the time after the COVID-19. These are the answer that our Venerable Sender has given us today. Thank you very much, Sender. And we hope Thanks. to see everyone again in our next question. See you again next question.